Dante DiVincenzo comes up big in a losing effort. All that and much more on the Knicks Digest. What's up, guys? It's your boy Dario from Knicks Digest. We could have had this one. We lost by the score of 111 to 106. Dante DiVincenzo had an enormous game with 35 points, 12 of 26 from the field, and 7 of 11 from three-point land, converting all four of his free throws, grabbing three rebounds and two assists. And this is the type of, this is exactly the type of game that we needed from Dante DiVincenzo, seeing how Brunson coming into the game was not 100%. And then the first couple minutes of the game, Brunson had to go out because he kind of restrained that foot, which still I don't understand how it's a right foot injury. Because if you go back to game two, Brunson gets, it looks like he gets kneed in the balls and then it looks like he pulled a groin or he's holding his, or he's holding his like hamstring, he's holding his thigh. So I'm still not exactly sure as to how it's a right foot injury or right foot contusion, but we could have had this game. I'm a little disappointed. We could have been up 3-0, but the Indiana Pacers, they did what they were supposed to do. The first game of the next two games at home, they protected home court. Jalen Brunson tonight at 26 points. He was 10 of 26 from the field, 2 of 6 from three-point land, converting four of his seven free throws, dishing out six assists with no rebounds. And like I said a little bit earlier, Brunson was a little bit hobbled with that right foot injury, but honestly, he still looked good. Minus a couple of plays where I saw him attack the rim, and then when he landed, he was a little bit iffy and he was a little gimpy. But for the most part, he looked okay. Josh Hart, the third party of the Villanova connection, ended the game with 10 points. He grabbed 18 rebounds with four assists, converting four of seven from the field, hitting his only three-point shot of the game, converting one of two free throws. Josh Hart, man, just 18 rebounds is just an absolute demon. Like, I, I feel like I keep saying that in every single video. He's just an absolute demon on the boards. And whenever he's a free agent, whenever his contract is up with the Knicks, he is going to be asking for a lot of money, and rightfully so, because Josh Hart has been coming to play when we need him the most. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, six points, grabbing eight rebounds, dishing out five assists, three or four from the field, no three-pointers, no free throw attempts, which is a little iffy because free throw attempts is what I look at to see how aggressive you're being. And Isaiah Hartenstein being the facilitator of the team, one of the facilitators of the team, I want to see Isaiah Hartenstein be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. It's a lot to ask of Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, and Jalen Brunson, those three players solely to depend on offensively. We need somebody else to step up we need somebody to step up in the place of Julius Randle in the place of Bogdanovich and tonight leading to, leading me to my next point coach Tibbs he went deep into his bench he even played Jericho Sims Jericho Sims he had four minutes he was in and out of the game but he still went deep into his bench Deuce McBride played 29 minutes I mean Deuce has already been part of the rotation Deuce had 10 points converting three of eight from the field two of five from three-point land converting two of his uh, converting both of his free throws grabbing two rebounds and dishing out one assist I'm gonna keep saying this in every video Deuce McBride since Bogdanovich has went out Randall has been out Mitchell Robinson is out Jalen Brunson is not hundred percent Deuce McBride has to add at least 10 to 18 points moving here on out now tonight he had 10 points which is barely making the mark in my opinion i just said that the responsibilities of the of the villanova connection josh hart dante divincenzo and jalen brunson there's too much pressure on their shoulders as far as offensively we're demanding so much from the villanova connection from hart divincenzo and brunson that we need offensive production from somebody else. If that's a Deuce McBride, if that's a Alec Burks, who leads, which leads me to my next point. This goes back to what I said about Coach Tibbs using his bench and going deep into his bench. Alec Burks tonight provided 21 minutes. He added 14 points, four of six from the field, two of four from three-point land, covering four of his five free throws, dishing out one assist and grabbing four rebounds. I mean, Alec Burks at this point is pretty much by default as to why he's getting minutes. Bogdanovich is out. Randall is out. Brunson is kind of hurt. And OG and Anobi. I, keep, I, I totally forgot about OG and Anobi. And he was ruled out for this game. And it looks like he's going to be ruled out for game four as well. The amount of bodies that we're missing, we need somebody else to step up. And right now, it's looking like Deuce McBride 
or Alec Burks. It's one of those two players that's really going to help us. And if we are able to get past this round, it's because one of those two players are going to come up big. In my personal opinion, I'll be putting my money on Deuce. Even though he hasn't had a really good series as of late, I feel like there's going to be one game where Deuce explodes and he's going to have maybe anywhere from like 18 to 24 points. And he's going to be the reason why we win one of these games. As far as the Indiana Pacers, I'm I'm still under the impression that you guys should still be embarrassed. You guys were able to win this game by the skin of your teeth with OG Ananobi and with Brunson being hobbled. You guys still needed like every single minute of this game in order to in order to edge out the W. If it was me personally and I was on the Indiana Pacers and I was on the on that NBA team, I would be riling up my teammates and saying that whoever is on the floor, Brunson is not healthy. We need to attack him as much as possible. We need to test out that foot. Deuce McBride coming off the bench is going to get no buckets. Alec Burst coming off the bench is going to get no buckets. So we're going to put so much pressure on Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo to come up big offensively. Now Dante DiVincenzo in this game, he has proved to that he can step up offensively. But the Indiana Pacers, man, like honestly, this game, tonight's game should not have been close. And we were in it up until the final whistle, honestly. It was only like a one possession or two possession game when the final whistle blew. But the Indiana Pacers, like, their rep the entire season was that they do not play defense and they only have one style of play. And up until tonight, it still looks the same. They're not really playing defense. It seems like their defensive and team IQ is just really low. If Dante DiVincenzo was going off and he ends the game with 35 points, sitting 7 of 11 from three-point line, don't you think that Rick Carlisle would adjust and have somebody just be around him every single time? Whoever's going to Dante DiVincenzo, don't you think that Rick Carlisle would be like, you're not going to be helping. You're going to stick to Dante DiVincenzo. If he gets off the ball, you're going to be chasing him around as if he's Steph Curry. And I don't know, man. The, Indi the Indiana Pacers, they just kept letting him get off. And another thing, going back to Rick Carlisle's decision to play TJ McConnell sparingly. TJ McConnell, honestly, if I was a Rick Carlisle, right, tonight he ended with 19 minutes. If I was Rick Carlisle, he'd be playing anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. TJ McConnell, he has been an absolute pest. Tonight, he ended the game with six points, which honestly isn't really a good TJ McConnell game because from what we have seen in this series so far, TJ McConnell, he can add to your team offensively, um, but his role on his team right now is kind of just to be the pest, specifically to Jalen Brunson. He is looked at as the Jalen Brunson just annoyance. He's the person that's going to bug Jalen Brunson the most. Just always be around him, always be in his chest, always be in his shirt, just to disrupt Jalen Brunson's flow and his rhythm. And up until this series, up until tonight's game, I mean, he's been doing a pretty good job, honestly. Tonight, he added six points, and the Indiana Pacers, in my opinion, they actually got lucky edging out the win tonight. Now, all in all, am I disappointed that we got the loss? Of course. I want the Knicks to win every single game. But I also like to consider myself a realist. And realistically, with the players that we had out, OG Nanobi, Bogdanovich, Randall, Mitchell Robinson, and Brunson being hobbled, realistically, I actually thought going into this game, I thought the Indiana Pacers would win this game. Now, going down the stretch, when I saw that it was a one or two possession game, when it was like a minute and a half left in the game, and I thought the Knicks could really pull it out, and they didn't, I was super upset, I was super disappointed, but at the end of the day, the Indiana Pacers, they did what they did. Their first game at home of two, they protected home court. And looking forward, man, I wouldn't be surprised if the Knicks closed this out in five. Which brings me to my next point. Coach Tibbs and the amount of minutes that he's playing all these players. Now, I, I understand that Coach Tibbs has this rep of just running his guys to the ground. He'd been, he's been doing that ever since he was with the Chicago Bulls. He did that when he was with the Minnesota Timberwolves. But in my opinion... He kind of has to do that right now. He has to do that with the Josh Hart's. He has to do that with the Dante's. He has to do that with the Jalen Brunson. Dante DiVincenzo played 44 of the 48 minutes. Josh Hart played 43 of the 48 minutes. Jalen Brunson played 38 of the 48 minutes. Isaiah Harnstein played 39 minutes of the 48 minutes. At, but at this point, we just the bodies that we're losing, it seems like we're losing bodies every single day. Another day is going to be another report of somebody else dealing with an injury or hopefully, knock on wood, that the... the there won't be another report tomorrow saying that this person is going to be out for the remaining of the playoffs because of this injury. 
So Coach Tibbs, he's just, in my opinion, like I keep saying, he's just doing what he has to do. And I do think that this was a perfect opportunity that we missed because if Coach Tibbs is going to be playing these players the amount of minutes that he's playing them, I think we need to close this series out sooner than later. If this series keeps going and it goes to a six games and it goes to a seven games, Josh Hart, Dante, Jalen Brunson, Isaiah Hartenstein, they're not going to be playing any less minutes. Every game from here on out, since the beginning of this series, especially Josh Hart, playing 48 minutes. Tonight, I think, was the first time that Josh Hart did not play the entire game. So if this series goes to six games, to seven games, with, with Brunson, Dante, Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein playing anywhere from 40 to 43 minutes or to 45 minutes out of the 48 minutes, they're going to wear down. They're going to wear out. They're going to burn out. So if we're able to close this series out in five games, which is still possible, it's absolutely possible, but the next game being in Indiana, we saw how the home crowd was going crazy, and it's just a really hard place to go in there and win. I wouldn't say that we could go into the next game with our foot off the pedal, off the gas pedal, because every single game we should be trying to win. We should be trying to take the hearts out of the teams that we're playing. Now, game four is on Sunday, uh, 3.30 Eastern time, 12.30 on the West Coast. So it's a little bit earlier of a start time. But going into that game, I am expecting the Knicks to just really battle with the Indiana Pacers. But if I'm, gonna, if I'm, here, to give you the, if I'm here to give you what I think is going to happen, I think the Indiana Pacers are going to tie up the series, which they should because, again, we are playing with a hobbled team. Our star player is hobbled. He's limping. He's gimping. He's fighting through pain. Mitchell Robinson, OJ Nanobi, Julius Randle, Bogdan Bogdanovich, our main players. It's not like the players that are out are just like rotational players. They are key players onto our team. They are out, and the Indiana Pacers, it still seems like they're just grappling with us to, to edge out a win like they did tonight. So we'll see what happens on Sunday. Hopefully the Knicks can go into Indiana and at least grab one game out of the two in Indiana. But that's it for today's video, guys. I want to say thank you for checking it out. Let me know and leave it in the comments what you guys thought about the Knicks' effort tonight. Were you disappointed that we were not able to grab the win? Or are you okay that the Indiana Pacers did what they were supposed to do and protect home court? But that's it for today's video, guys. You know the drill. You know the vibes. Taj Gibson for president, wherever you are. Jalen Brunson for MVP, the MVP of the playoffs, in my opinion. The deuce is loose. Deuce McBride, like I keep saying at the end of every video, we need you to step up anywhere from 10 to 18 points. And if you, hopefully you're able to have that one breakout game, you can have anywhere between 18 to maybe 22 points and really help us out. But until next time, guys, I'll check you out in the next video. Peace. Go Knicks, baby.